So if you've been dying to watch two complete van build newbies take a jigsaw and cut two giant holes in the roof, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're installing our Max Vans. We're Sherry and Jim. For the past five and a half years, we've been exploring the world on motorcycles, bicycles, and an expedition four-wheel drive. Right now, we're supposed to be in Siberia driving our Land Cruiser east from Mongolia. But like everyone, 2020 threw us a curveball. So new plan, we bought a van and we're burning the midnight oil to convert a stock Sprinter into our dream tiny home on wheels. Okay, another day and another van build project. project. <laughs> um, today we're doing that really scary thing. We're gonna be cutting two big holes in the roof so we can install our Max Vans. Um, we'll walk through each step of the process, but I'd like to highlight three things we've made sure we included. One, we'll be installing an internal wood frame that we're gonna use to mount the fan into for some added support. And so we'll talk through how we're doing that. The second thing is, um, and I think it's the most important thing yes. from my perspective as a newbie, is when we were watching other YouTube videos, a lot of them didn't really include much detail in specifically how they selected the location for each of their fans. And specifically what I mean is how did they determine that this is their exact right spot to start cutting so they didn't hit any of the support beams or other important bits um, on the roof. So we'll talk about how we selected the, the right location. And then finally, um, we've decided decided to use an alternative to Dicor as kind of the final step in the waterproofing process. We'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and if you um, watch till the end, we're going to try to answer the really important question of <laughs> if we were to do this all over again, what would we do differently? Our goal is not to have to do this all over again. <laughs> yeah. um, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools we use, look in the links below and I mean look in the description below and we'll leave the links there. Right. And last but not least, but really importantly, we want to remind you that we're not experts as if it's not obvious. I think it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> we're total doobies. This is our first fan build. So, you know, just take this as like inspiration and ideas for your own van build and definitely do research before you start cutting holes in your roof. Uh, we'd hate to steer you in the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> Okay, so our first order of business is to create a sound foundation to screw our fan into. And to do that, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a wood frame that mounts to the underside of our roof. Um, the real driver behind this is that um, Max Fan recommends that the roof be installed uh, with a minimum roof thickness of one and an eighth inch. And suffice it to say, our Sprinter Vans roof is substantially thinner than that. So to create our, our frame, we're gonna basically use some leftover one by twos from our subfloor. Um, it's a little bit hard to explain exactly how this is all gonna come together at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut everything down to size and once I start putting it together, I'll explain exactly how we're, we're building the frame. or I discussed before is I just took our scrap one by twos, which have an actual dimension of three quarters of an inch by one and a half inch. I always find that really yeah, confusing. It's really strange. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> um, and we stacked two of them on top of each other or glued two of them on top of each other so that we have a frame that measures one and a half inches by one and a half inches with importantly, most importantly, an internal um, dimension a 14 by 14, which matches up to what we need for the fan placement. Um, and to do it, I simply just cut four 17 inch um, 
boards and four 14 inch boards and just place the 14 inch boards on top of the 17 inch or boards where they're centered. And that gave us a nice um, joint on each corner that we could put together and then glue the whole thing into a frame. Um, the second piece though of kind of our over like of our fan installation is this adapter plate and the adapter plate um, these things have become really popular I think with van builds I feel like most of the YouTube videos I've watched recently are using the builders were using these plates and they kind of sung their praises so we got it as well it's not necessary that being said I highly recommend it I really like this thing I like it for two reasons one's very obvious and that's that this plate is basically just a CNC um, piece of I think it's plastic Basically, it just form fits to the, the nuanced lines of the roof, including the ribs. So that gives you a nice contoured fit that follows the roof line. The other thing I like a lot about it, though, I mean, perhaps a lot more, is just that it, it gives you a really kind of lazy <laughs> um, way to identify the exact location um, for your fan placement where you're going to cut the hole in the fan. So I kind of view it as like a template for cutting the hole. It's kind of like an insurance policy. Yeah. Right? That you make the, you cut the hole in the right place. Right. Because <laughs> you can buy different adapters for different fan locations on the roof. Now, that being said, we still measure and everything yeah. to make sure, kind of dot our I's and cross yeah, our T's to make sure that this is in fact the right location. But it just kind of makes it easier to identify that and then it gives us a nice um, template to trace the line as well. Yeah. And so that brings us to what is in the box. What's in the box? <laughs> so this is the mounting flange that goes on top of the roof um, that the fan will mount into. Um, these are the screws they supplied to mount the, the fan or the flange. Uh, we chose to actually buy our own screws. We got one and a half inch stainless steel screws because we need something um, longer for our uh, bracket. Um, and of course you've got your instruction manual and ours also came with a remote control. Um, here we have our fan, <laughs> actual fan. And this is the trim ring that we'll actually um, mount later inside the van, like once we install the ceiling. And um, they give it at a, with a pretty long length, but you can cut it down uh, to the level that you need. And the thing that I think would have been most helpful in a lot of the van build um, videos that I watched um, was just how does this all fit together? Um, and so I thought I'd take two seconds to kind of show that. So it's basically like this, you've got our, frame and the frame goes under the roof or mounts directly under the roof mm -hmm. and then of course you have the roof and then on top of the roof you have the adapter plate and then on top of the adapter plate you have the mounting flange for the fan that fits nice and neat like that and then on top of that if I can get it to slide into place is the, <laughs> better slide into place <laughs> is the actual fan and just bolts onto the mounting flange with four bolts and so, or four screws and so yep. that's it and then of course you finish it off with the trim ring um, on the inside once you're finished with your internal seat and whatever yep. here's the trick um, it's really important that we identify the exact location for this fan because underneath the roof we have two um, of the van's uh, lateral support beams um, and one runs roughly straight across here and there's another one running straight back here um, and so we've got room to play with but we don't have enough that we can really make a big mistake without hitting one of those beams and so the trick is trying to figure out exactly where between the beams we want to cut um, now the easy part of that is using this adapter plate it kind of slips really nicely as I kind of alluded to before between the different ribs and the roof of the van um, and so you know with uh, just a little bit of um, fudge, you know that you're pretty much in the right place. Um, but pretty much is kind of scary when you're drilling into a van. So um, to double check that, this is the approach we've taken. We've identified a, a central point that we can identify from the top side of the roof and from the underside of the roof. And so the point we've identified is the edge of this rib here. And this edge happens to be almost exactly, I think, the midpoint between the two support ribs under the bottom. And so when I measured under the bottom, it measured from this point 
to the rib is about, roughly speaking, it's just shy of 10 inches. And um, when I measured from uh, this point to this rib, or this support beam, it was also roughly 10 inches or a little less than 10 inches. I say roughly because especially when you're looking from the underside, um, there's a lot of glare and it's hard to identify the exact edge of this rib. Um, so conservatively, we should assume that it's a little less than 10 inches. Um, and so then once I'm back up here, what we did was we, we measured from the rib from the edge of the rib, since it's a known location, to the ed the outer edge of our um, adapter plate. Um, and that gives us about seven and a half inches in this direction, and I think it's about nine and you know three eighths, very conservatively nine and three eighths this direction. That's not exactly right. I'm trying to kind of round up a bit to give us margin for error. Obviously what you really care about is where you're cutting here. Um, but because we're putting this wood frame under the bottom, um, I'm trying to make sure we have plenty of room for the frame. And the wood frame is slightly larger than this adapter plate. So we're, we're confident that we've got this thing in the right place. And so now before I start tracing the, the line we're gonna cut, um, I am taking one last step. I'm just trying to put the adapter plate or secure it with a little bit of tape to make sure it doesn't slide around while um, while I'm uh, tracing. I'm doing right now is I'm just adding a little bit of tape right along the edge um, of our of our traced line where we're going to be cutting um, just to protect the paint from the jigsaw. Before I actually get up in the reef and we start cutting with the jigsaw, um, I'm going to do one more kind of prep work step, um, and that's I'm going to take our base plate or our adapter plate, and I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill holes in the adapter plate. One small but important detail we want to take care of before we start cutting into the roof is to tape up a plastic bag and we'll make sure to catch any metal shavings while we cut. Okay, so step one, I'm just going to drill four pilot holes, one in each corner um, inside my cut line. And um, then I'm gonna use a step bit to um, widen or increase the size of the pilot holes until it's big enough for me to have starting points for the jigsaw. missed a step on video and that's that we uh, file down the sides of the hole after we cut it just to kind of deburr the edges. Um, so I've already done that but basically just you know file it around. Um, and then um, now I just need to treat the uh, raw edges um, with some Rust-Oleum. dry for um, our jigsaw cut and um, now what I've done is I meant to film it this morning just totally forgot but I went ahead and I put the adapter plate and the um, mounting flange for the fan um, in place and I'm holding it in place currently with four clamps in the corners just to make sure it's positioned exactly right 
Um, and I've also put in a handful of screws um, just through the flange and the adapter plate just to make sure all my screw holes are perfectly lined up because now before I put on one last coat of Rust-Oleum and everything, I'm going to um, pre-drill the holes to the roof um, for our screws. Okay, so all I've got left to do is just deburr these holes. Um, I've got a small um, round file that I think is actually a specialized round file that's designed for chainsaw uh, maintenance. But um, it fits, it's actually a 532nd, so it's made to fit exactly into this hole size. metal shavings from um, the jigsaw and from uh, drilling these holes and filing everything down. Um, you know, it's everybody talks about how much shavings you get, and this is a really good example. This isn't a very big hole, and this is just what I'm looking at is the bag that we have uh, mounted underneath the hole to catch all this stuff, and it's just everywhere. And, you know, everybody will tell you that this stuff rusts really quickly if it's inside your car or on the roof or whatever, and so it's important to get it all off. Yeah, before we actually mount the fan onto the roof, we are going to do really kind of one of the most important steps in the process, which is waterproofing everything. And I think Jim mentioned before that we took a note from the boating playbook, and we are relying 100% on beetle tape. <laughs> okay, and we're relying 100% on beetle tape for waterproofing. Yeah, so our, our beetle tape is three quarter inch by one eighth inch. And so we want to make sure we cover the entire bracket. So we make sure the screw holes are, are covered, just everything. And um, we'll be applying two strips uh, to each of these. Yeah, the whole idea, importantly, is we just wanna make sure that when this bracket is flush up against the roof of the van, that you're not getting water underneath the bracket. And of course, the same thing, because this is a separate piece, the same thing when it sits on top of the bracket. You want to make sure there's not water coming through yeah. between the two brackets. And then importantly, obviously, we don't want water getting through the screw holes either. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so this is basically, it just come, butyl tape comes on a roll, and it's basically just a peel and stick process. Well, in theory anyway. Um, the first roll we had for our first fan, um, it worked out really, really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just overlapping the corners a little bit. And then I am going to run it all the way across. And then I'll use this as it's just to, like Sherry is doing, just to kind of bed it into the fan flange. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we have two strips of butyl tape. Um, and so, just it, it's like Play Doh. So, I'm just Kind of mashing the two ends together so it's kind of one seamless strip. Okay so now I'm ready to put everything together um, and here's what I've done so far. I basically just cleaned the area around the um, the top of the hole just to make sure everything's nice and clean. Um, I then put down the um, adapter plate and on top of the adapter plate I put down the uh, this white plastic flange for the fan. Um, and underneath all of that, uh, which you couldn't see, Sherry um, was underneath um, positioning our wooden bracket that we've created that everything screws into. And that's right underneath the, the ceiling. And um, I've screwed two kind of an opposing ends, I put, or two corners. Um, I went ahead and put two screws in, and now I'm going to put the other two in the other two corners. Um, and once I've got that, then I'll go ahead and add the other 12 uh, screws. Um, I'm using two inch stainless steel Phillips head screws with um, a stainless steel washer in each one. The washer is just important because I'm trying to make sure that I displace a little bit of the load um, on the, the lip of the, or the edge of this, um, this plastic flange just to help avoid it cracking. All right, this 
that's it. So we've got this mounted and um, all we need to do is put the fan in place. Installing the fan is really easy. It's by far the easiest part of this entire process. And so all I need to do is just place the fan over top of the flange and it'll seat so that you have four screws that you're gonna screw into. Now importantly, and I should have shown this, but right now the fan's in the open position. Um, it comes in the closed position, but you just have this screw that allows you to manually open or close the fan. It needs to be all the way open to be able to seat the fan. So I'm just gonna slide it over. Let me actually, before I slide it over, I'll show you something. So I'm gonna slide it over um, the flange and it's gonna screw into um, these four floating brackets and I say floating it's important because sometimes they won't line up if they don't line up you can just slide the bracket up or down to get it to line up with the holes on the fan okay so that's it the fan is in place it's literally as easy as just screwing these things into place Now, the, they don't, the holes don't have to be lined up perfectly because these screws, of course, have a point on the end. And so as long as a little bit of the hole is visible on that floating bracket, then the hole, I mean, the, excuse me, the point on the screw will find it and then it'll kind of self-adjust or self-seat it itself, whatever, if that makes sense. Now this is, in fact, you'll notice I'm kind of pointing the screw down, it's because the, the hole's at the very bottom of, and so I had to get it to where the tip of the screwdriver would get into the hole, and now it's, you know, right, it, it's seated itself in the hole, and of course it's, it's adjusted and just screws in normally. That's it. All right, so our fan is finished. So, Everything's installed, everything's ready to go. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it this way overnight. And in the morning, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to check and see how much of this butyl tape has been pushed out. And I'll check the screws, cause as overnight, the butyl tape should kind of push out the edges. Um, and then I'll check the screws. If necessary, I'll tighten the screws a little bit um, to adjust for the butyl tape kind of flattening out. And then we'll trim the butyl tape. All right, so they're actually really tight. Um, just had to make a couple of really like quarter turn adjustments, and that's it. Um, now, next thing is the issue of all this butyl tape. I just need to clean all this up. To clear away the butyl tape, it's uh, really nothing more than just taking this straight edge and run it, or the box knife, whatever, and run it along the edge. The top edge, there's two layers of butyl tape on the outside. Uh, there's the layer between our flange and our adapter plate, and then there's the layer between the adapter plate and the roof of the van. To clear away the top layer uh, between the flange and the adapter plate is really easy because the adapter plate is slightly larger than the flange, so I just need to run around the edge. That should be quite easy to tidy, tidy up. Um, for the bottom edge, it's a little more uh, challenging because it's the roof of the van so I don't want to cut into the paint so I'll just use a um, old credit card or whatever um, and run that along underneath the blade to make sure I don't cut into the paint of the car all right so that's pretty much it um, this is what it came out of uh, or off the sides um, when we trimmed it up. Okay, so we're down to the wire. Um, one final step, I'm gonna apply some 3M uh, 4000 UV marine sealant around the outer edge, uh, just to add a little bit of additional waterproofing.
Okay, so we finished our Max fan install, which we're really relieved. Everything went really well. Um, it's yeah. very, <laughs> it's really solid. What? When she, when she says solid, what she's saying is we took it down I-80 to test it, <laughs> it and the fans off. didn't go flying out on the interstate. <laughs> yeah, the frame, you just, the frame feels really secure. Everything feels great. Um, it's, it's also waterproof, waterproof yeah. which is really important. Right. And so I think the more important question is if we had to do this over again, which thankfully, hopefully we won't for a while, um, what we do differently. And I think the big thing is that we kind of, we, we had this one mistake we made, which we didn't realize until later in the process. And that's when we installed the first fan. Um, we, we really cared about aesthetics and we wanted to look really clean. And so to do that, we didn't want to use Dicor. And so we chose using 3M sealant um, as we talked about. And we followed or we took a play directly out of the Sailing World's playbook and how they bet a deck hatch. And so we followed that process. We installed just using butyl tape and stainless steel screws. We waterproofed or water tested it at the end and everything went perfectly. Yeah. But then I was doing a little bit of research after that install um, when we were kind of celebrating our success and it looked so clean and so professional. Um, and I realized that I had bedded the screws incorrectly. Um, I basically used a screw instead of a bolt and it compromised the seal with butyl tape and so we run the risk down the road even though it's not leaking we run the risk down the road of having leaks in some of these uh these screws that are holding our fan in place um so to fix that problem instead of pulling everything out and doing it again we took the easy approach which is to take some of our 3m 4000 uv marine sealant and we put it on top of each one of the screw heads to make sure that there's no way for yeah. water to get in <laughs> it works it's fine everything's great it's kind of a simple way to, to solve the problem but it aesthetically isn't as appealing as it could be. Yeah, he's and, a bit of a perfectionist. And so, yeah, I'm so. bothered by that. <laughs> and so, um, if you're like me and you want it to really look professional and clean, then my recommendation is do a little bit of homework into the sailing forums and look at how they bed deck hardware and you'll run into plenty of information yeah. on how you correctly bed a stainless steel kind of through bolt or whatever um, to make sure that it's waterproof with just butyl tape. And hopefully that would allow you to avoid the same mistake and you could have a really clean look that has none of this extra sealant on the top of your fan flange. Yeah. Well, if you're interested in following our van bill from the beginning, middle, whatever, then click here, here, somewhere around our heads. Wherever there's a box, it shows our playlist. <laughs> there will be a playlist. Um, also, if you like this video and you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Um, and if you'd like to follow our build from here on out, uh, click subscribe and also the notification button. Right. So I think that's a wrap until the next one. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. See you guys. See you.